Heyo, I'm Ao, and today we're playing A Mortician's Tale. It's a really cute game. It makes you think about death a lot, because you're kind of working with the dead. Um, but it's got a lot of reading, so I'm probably going to release these in episodes, just because I don't want to get burnt out, and I know you don't. But we're just- I did play a little bit already. September 4th, or September 14th, 10, 15 a.m. This is us. Our name is Charlie, or Charlotte, I believe. Um, yeah, to Charlie. Hello and welcome to our new funeral director. Or hello and welcome to our, yeah, our new, well, okay. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to meet you. My name's Matthew, and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you and helps with some of the more heavy lifting. Ever hear about that joke? Or ever hear that joke about a hearse driver? I'll tell it to you when you come in in a bit. When I come in in a bit. Jesus. I'm already starting off strong. <laughs> with my, my reading skills. Looking forward to working together. I think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. She wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Cheers and good luck. Matthew J. Funeral Director. So we work at Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. It says, hello, welcome to our new funeral director. This is from Amy, the owner. Hello, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Charlotte, or Charlie, as she told me she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a re recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career with, <laughs> career here with us at Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. Please take the time to make Charlie feel at home with our little family. We have a nice catered lunch this afternoon so we could all get to know each other a little better as well. Sincerely, Amy Rose, founder and director of Roses and Garden Daughters. It's from Amy here. Hello, Charlie. Well, you're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. In your office uh, preparation room, you'll find your cremation station. Cremate Cremulator station, embalming station, and obviously, since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experience working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best, Amy Rose. This is from our friend Jen. Good luck, you beautiful and smart babe, you. From Jen Love. Huh, I guess my subject lines are to you should start being more professional now, now that we are business professionals. I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature. I love that you were able to land this gig straight after graduating. It sounds super cool. I don't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing until now. I guess it's not just something I really think of that much about. I should look into this more. Learn more about your world and industry because as I said, you are now a very serious professional. Speaking of being a professional, my museum, my museum gig is amazing. I can't believe somebody paid me to move to London and not London. O-N? Oh, Ontario. London, Ontario. Right? Ontario? Uh, I don't know. Serial, yeah, serial killer capital of Canada. I knew it. <laughs> to work in a museum. Like, take that everyone who said I couldn't get a job with an art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when we Skype. My stories require to see you, or er, require to see my face in that you'll hear my excellent British accent impersonation. Also, I signed you up for a funeral monthly newsletter. Consider it your graduation gift. I love you slash I'm super proud of you gift. I love you, I love you, I love you. Jen L, museum curator. This is from Amy. It says, another one from Amy. She sends a lot of emails. Hello, Charlie. Hope you've settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you were really friendly, and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. Your first body is Miss Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is needed. The family seems a bit more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. 
Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier, if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Miss Garcia, I do think it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Miss Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon, Amy. It's funeral Monthly. Okay, thanks for subscribing. Each month we bring you new newsletters featuring topics pertaining to the death industry. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. Really, I can't believe we have to write this one out, but since we said we'll answer your most popular questions, here we are, because it's definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time. We understand that, but here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at a funeral. Generally, following the guidelines of don't be a jerk should work. <laughs> one, don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but at this time and place is to disengage. If you have to be on your phone, don't do so inside the funeral home. Two, don't be loud and obnoxious. You could share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Please be, qu being quiet gives other people space they might need. Don't get drunk. Everyone could deal with their feelings on their own ways. Just remember to be respectful when the grieving family and friends. Happily reminisce, number four. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experience with the deceased can be a productive part of the healing process. Number five, can give con English. Give consolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even I'm thinking of you could go a long way. Number six, dress appropriately. What this looks like will be changed. <laughs> What this looks like will be changed based on the customs of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. Number eight, give a gift or sign the registration book. This could be flowers or just a nice card, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this could even be just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and helpful. I never knew anything about eight there that's that's nice uh you have to respond with sure i'll get right to it to amy before we could actually start our quest this is mrs garcia she i believe passed away from a heart attack we read that and this is the prep room where you prepare bodies for burials and feelings the family has requested a closed casket fair ceremony with no embalming. You are just going to clean the body. We're going to click the sponge and just clean her up. Um, this game refers a lot to death, clearly, and how people grieve. That's it, you're done. Miss Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of dressing and putting her in her casket. It's time to go to Miss Garcia's funeral. You are responsible for taking care of the deceased body, but it is also important to pay your respect to their loved ones. Follow the arrow, yeah. So we're all dressed up for Mrs. Garcia's funeral. Look at us. In our little black dress. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Oh, while I'm here, I should read this. It's Roses and Daughters Funeral Home. Amelia Rose, founder and director, about Rose's and, or Rose and Daughters. Rose and Daughter Funeral Home was founded by my grandparents back in 1956. The Rose family has proudly served the area since then, providing personal, affordable funeral services for all. I'm proud to have carried on my family's business for the last 36 years, working with the best and brightest funeral directors and grief counselors in the area. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you've recently experienced a loss you would like us to help you through this and would like us to help you through this hard time. We're committed to providing loved ones with the best and most affordable funeral service in the area. We offer a diverse range of personalized funeral service options to fit every need. So like there's their prices, open casket, you know, we're not going to read all that. The cheapest one is $600 all inclusive um, for you know just a cremation that's actually really cheap we also offer custom packages to suit every budget and need 
please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions. And I don't know how much funeral homes are now, but they're expensive to have a funeral. And that's always like been a concern of mine when I die. She would have hated these paintings. She was so particular. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. We don't usually small talk a lot of these things, but at least that's what I always was taught. I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. I think I might actually miss those sweaters. She used to knit for me now. Aw. That's sad. Little kid. Mommy, I'm hungry. When can we go? Kids never seem to care about funerals. Yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? Seems strange to be using chemicals that is known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do to the leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? That stuff's toxic. At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. <laughs> Stop it, don't make me laugh right now. And then we're going to say goodbye to the departed. And then we will leave because we talk to everyone. October 11th, 10.09 a.m. We're cleaning up our station here. Our girl has tattoos. I don't know if you can see them too well. See? Let's see if you can turn a little. Yeah, you can see. Charlie has some tattoos and they're very pretty. Charlie's adorable. I like the little character model they have for her. Jennifer Valentine. See, I was confused about the name change because her name was Love. Maybe she just put that there because she likes it. I don't know. Or if that's her real name. <laughs> to Charlie. I am so frustrated right now. Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight lacer liver specimen and we, we have here at the museum. It's from a woman who died in 1907 and the liver, the liver is tapered inwards from what the doctors leading the autopsy believe was too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular, and while people associated it with fainting or hysteria, uh, yay, it's actually been associated with verupsy, topsy, which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdominum, abdominum, right? Which is super unsettling, but can be also caused by being pregnant. So, TLDR, corsets probably mess up some bones but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage. And I'm tired of the condescendence about my wardrobe that also implies I don't know what I'm doing. Those are the kind of things that I specific res specifically research and yet I'm treated like I know nothing. I'm having a day, Charlie. Love, Jen. Well, Jen L, the heart. And then she says, can I just rant for a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anybody cough male colleagues cough get on my case for wearing corsets i wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse so it's not like i'm dressing inappropriate even though the dress codes are such sexist bs anyway and like i hate how their misogyny gets veiled into fox concern jen i'm just worried you're damaging your body you know what corsets do to livers right Corsets don't do anything to livers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condescendence is hurting my head. Ugh. Sorry, I'm out of sorts right now. I'll send you another email in a bit when I've cooled off. Jen. Yeah, that would be annoying. Amy. Hi, Charlie. Here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one, and the family is very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing your grieving family isn't the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly man, died of old age. 
Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You could reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She is handling her family's, her father's passing as well as can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Best, Amy Rose. P.S. Charlie dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew. He knows. Passing this mesh lod along. Thank you for the hard work, Charlie. This is Mia Garcia, so it must be the daughter. Please pass this message along to our deepest thank you, or pass along our deepest thank you and your, to you and your staff for the wonderful job they did with our mother's funeral. It was really lovely. Our family so rarely gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring our own food in. Getting to share most home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it was... It meant a lot. So what I'm saying is, it was nice for everyone to be there like that, together in that way. I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. Best, Mia. From Matthew, a story about death. Hey there, Charlie. I was driving around the other day, you know, talking our clients Taking our clients on their last trip around town, and I was thinking, strange, I know. Did I ever tell you about the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager, about to start university, and a friend of mine was killed in a car accident. Totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me and my friends up real good. But so, the big day, and we all got in our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us, so we had at least three different cars full of us. Like clown cars, you know? While we're in the process of going to the ceremony, somebody in a car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out some asshat driver who doesn't know, nah, doesn't know to get in the way of procession, procession, I don't know, hmm? Drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Nobody was hurt, thank God, but can you imagine getting that call? Jesus. Anyway, one of my friends in the same car, just as me, the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in a way that makes you not sure if they really just want to cry or if they've gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed. And then we are still giggling because, like, go figure, life is messed up sometimes, you know? There is no moral, no point to that story. I guess I just remembered that story and wanted to tell you, because we work with death all the time, and I still sometimes get caught off guard by what that actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, this has nothing to do with why I became a funeral director. That decision came on later in life. It's nothing re unremarkable. Somebody has to do it, and I have a strong stomach, so why not? See you in a bit. Or see you in a bit, Charlie, from Matthew. From Funeral Monthly again. What to wear when you're attending a funeral from a different culture? Ooh. We all know that everyone wants, everyone wants to be respectful at funerals. Don't talk too loudly. Be kind and refrain from making inappropriate jokes. At least around the grieving family. Hey, sometimes people just need a little bit of a pick-me-up during such hard times. Who are we to judge? A big part is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lead more to the formal black attire rule, and it works for us. Did you know this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire, where people would wear black as a symbol of mourning? Black isn't universally the symbol of mourning, though. And you're attending, and if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not of your own, it's important to understand this. Some colors have different meanings, and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice can mean accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and in Chinese culture, white is typically a color for mourning. For Islam, though, it's less about the color you are wearing or more about how modestly you are dressed. Refrain from wearing any elaborate jewelry, 
and be respectful of your behavior. First, so you can. Funerals. Color of the clothing isn't as important as dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Appropriately sit cross-legged. That's, I have never knew any of that. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral. No matter what, really. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what it is and isn't appropriate to wear. If you're attending it to support a family, friend, or partner, this day is not about you. So please be sure to do whatever you can to be as respectful and supportive as possible. Even if that means not wearing what you used, used to wearing at a funeral, or even if it means just asking how you could appropriately show your respect. And then this is the same still. Get right on it to Amy. She's all in her little gear. Charlie's adorable. Um, prior embalming. Use the family crust otherwise, or unless the family requests otherwise. Let's start by cleaning. Um, but yeah, I remember the first time I went to a funeral. It was my um, my grandpa on my mom's side, and I was never really close to him. But my sister was, and I don't know if my mom was, I never, I don't talk to her anymore. But I remember there was a kid's room in the, in the basement of where the place was being held. And I, I thought that was so strange that there was just a kid's room that the kids could go downstairs and play when there's a funeral going around upstairs and I remember coming upstairs and I, I went over to my mom and she was crying and since my mom was crying I had begun crying even though I, I wasn't all that close with him but when she started crying I started getting upset and And she actually comforted me, which she doesn't usually. She never was really a comforting person. I, I don't think I ever remember a time where she hugged me except for during that funeral. But, I don't know, funerals do show such a different change in people. Sometimes I wonder if she was actually grieving or if that was just the act she put on to the people around her. I'd like to believe that she was grieving and that was the one time she showed humanity and actually hugged one of her children in a heartfelt manner, but I don't know. I, I'm not in contact with my mother anymore and I'm not saying that to like get pity or anything. That's just how it went, goes in life. But yeah, I remember... I think my sister... My sister was very close to him, because she never had a father figure growing up. We're all done, Mike will take care of Mr. Duval's makeup as well as dressing and putting him in his casket. Time to attend the funeral. But I believe she was up there the whole time, and... I don't remember how it affected her, but I know it affected her crazy. Like, that was... It came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, and then the next, poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about for too long. Like staring at the sun, I start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. Mm hmm so weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah, yeah. So strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yes, I think it's different for family members. I can't remember. I haven't gone to many traditional funerals, but mostly white. 
So mostly white, but like definitely not red, no matter what. Red. I didn't remember reading anything about the red in the monthly thing. He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. The kid's just playing on his phone. He doesn't even care. Humming to himself. Now. See, I don't know how kids grieve. I mean, they I don't understand if the kids in this game understand what death is. But it's strange. They don't seem to re respond at all. December 2nd, 10:22 a.m. Um, we're going to actually end this episode here and come back to this next time. But you know, thank you for watching. This is going to be a bit heavier of a game than usual. Usual. Jesus, I can't even speak properly when I'm not reading. And if that's something you're not into, then I really recommend not watching this series. But if you are into that and you're ready to face some of these emotions that you might not have thought of when you've been to a funeral or experienced death, then you know, experience it with me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.